There is a problem with moving around in VR games today. Moving in virtual reality, using an analog stick or teleportation while your body actually stays still in real life can lead to motion sickness and break immersion. This is the VR locomotion problem. We would like to be able to move around in VR in an immersive manner and not be limited by the real life space that we have available. There are many concepts and solutions for solving this problem. The most popular solutions are VR omnidirectional treadmills such as the Virtuax Omni, Catwalk, and Infinidec, and there are plenty of other videos covering those popular solutions. If you want to learn more about those solutions, I highly recommend Virtual Dreamer's video, Moving in VR, the Frontier of VR Innovation, and I will leave a link to his video in the description below. This video will go over solutions to the VR locomotion problem that are much less well known and you probably haven't heard of yourself. Many of these solutions I only found out about because of the extensive research I did for making my own solution and from the members on my Discord. In the Discord, we discuss solutions to this problem and have some people, myself included, who are working on our own solutions. Link to the Discord is in the description below. And now, here are 12 solutions slash concepts to solve the VR locomotion problem that you probably haven't heard of. First on the list are a pair of VR shoes a member on my Discord, known as Ash2002, is working on. These shoes are awesome. The shoes shown here just negate your forward and backward movement right now. But Ash says that he is working on and has already made some major improvements. He says that he is working on supporting fully omnidirectional movement with the shoes to support strafing and is making it so that the user can flex and bend his foot as he walks. He eventually wants to have safety barriers to prevent the user from falling over instead of using a safety harness. A link to his video and all the other solutions that I'm going to talk about is in the description below. Ash's main priorities right now are to make shoes that are compact and low cost. He says that the shoes, as they are now, feel no heavier than leather boots, and keeping the weight down with these shoes is very important. I am very excited to see how his shoes progress and love discussing ideas with him in the Discord. Another pair of motorized shoes are these made by Ecto VR. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. You can see these are another pair of shoes that negate your forward motion as you walk. These shoes look a lot bigger and probably heavier than, say, Ash's shoes, but keep in mind that this video was taken over a year ago, so they could have made some major improvements by now. Ecto VR is actually having their product reveal for the Ecto One on September 17th, 2020, in five days from the recording of this video, and I'm excited to see what they're going to show. Here's a closer look at the shoes. You can see that there are four vibe trackers, what kind of look like ball transfers in the corners, but it looks like they just slide instead of roll, and three modules on each shoe containing the motors and wheels. Maybe it's possible that these modules rotate to support strafing, but I can't tell. In addition to wondering how much these shoes weigh, I'm also wondering if these shoes being so tall will force the user to be careful not to roll an ankle. But regardless of the possible issues, I'm still excited to see how this product progresses and I think that this is a step in the right direction. Another solution that we don't know much about is from WeVR, which again I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. Who I assume is the inventor here is not showing the actual device, presumably because he's trying to patent it, so it's not clear what the device looks like or how it works. But from this video, it looks like it works well for just walking forward, and it looks like the device has a pretty short stride length, so the actual device is probably relatively small. So if you don't like taking small steps, that might be an issue for you. But this makes sense because on his website it says that the device can slide under a bed when it's not in use, so it must not be that big. From the way he rotates, it looks like he could be on some sort of disc that rotates about the center, so rotation might feel a little bit awkward. But like I said, walking looks pretty natural, and I'm excited to see what happens with this. Another VR treadmill on the smaller side is this one. The disc has slits in it for each shoe, or each slider, and I assume that somehow these sliders strap to the user's foot. And you can see that the entire disc rotates back and forth as the user walks. I'm personally not sure how well this concept will work in reality, because the disc will have to be rotating back and forth, changing direction with each step very fast. I'm not sure what mechanism is used to make the sliders go back and forth, and I wonder if it would be better to just keep that slider mechanism and get rid of the disc altogether. If you're a member of this channel, then you've probably heard of this solution, but if not, here is my solution. These are motorized shoes like Ash's and Ecto VR shoes. 
These shoes use omnidirectional wheels to support complete omnidirectional movement. My shoes are heavy, but you don't actually have to lift them up off the ground. They have a binding that slides along rods so that you can lift your foot up and down while the shoe just gets pulled along the ground. In this way, the weight of the shoe does not matter as much because the shoes just roll on the wheels. And in my opinion, they're easy to move. The last test I showed with the shoes had manual controls and not so great electronics. I'm currently working on making the shoes much more responsive and automating them. If you want to stay up to date on my progress, you can subscribe to this channel. Another member on my Discord, Mouse Darby, shared his concept for a VR shoe that uses springs and sliders. You can see that the user would take a step forward and the slider helps negate forward motion and then when the user lifts his foot up in the air again, the springs bring the sliders back. In this animation, the shoes can only negate a foot's length of forward motion, but now Starby has said that he's thinking about using a torsion spring instead to help solve this problem, and we discussed adding a way to adjust the spring's tension. He also shared a few other shoe concepts that combine rollers and sliders to help negate forward motion. These shoes have the advantage of not needing motors or electronics other than the sensors to track the movement of the shoe. So they could potentially be the cheapest VR shoe or at least be as cheap as the cyber shoes. And I'm hoping that he can take this concept to reality. This is an old video of yet another pair of VR shoes. These shoes use a flex shaft to couple the shoes to a motor located in a backpack, keeping the shoes themselves small and compact. They can only go forward and backward, but yet they look like they work really well. But there are some little improvements that I could suggest making. The part where the flex shaft couples to the shoes is awkwardly wide and the flex shaft is flopping all over the place. Maybe the part where the flex shaft couples to the shoe could be made smaller by using beveled gears and rotating the flex shaft up 90 degrees and then you could have some guides running along the user's legs to hold the flex shaft in place better. As you can see there are several VR shoes on this list that can only go forward and backward as of now. But what if you could combine them with a regular treadmill and have fully omnidirectional movement? With this concept, you would have VR shoes capable of only going forward and backward, but you would use them on a regular treadmill rotated sideways to support side-to-side -side motion. The shoes themselves can be less complex and possibly cheaper, and you can use a regular treadmill design. But the treadmill would probably have to be wider than what's available from most consumer treadmills today. This next design helps illustrate the next concept on this list, which I call construction in front and destruction in back. This is the circular floor. The robots construct a floor in front of you, and then once one of the robots gets behind you, it moves around again to the front. You can think of this design as constructing a floor in front of you and destroying the floor behind you. With independent robots like this making up the floor, this is possible. Imagine taking this concept further and having a floor made up of many little robots that can move independently. So the concept is if you can create some mechanism or use some material that can construct itself in front of you, then destruct itself behind you and wrap around again to the front to be constructed again, you would have yourself a solution to the VR locomotion problem. With this concept in mind, maybe some of you watching can think of how to apply it to make an omnidirectional treadmill. For example, and moving on to our next concept, here is one idea I have for applying this concept to create an omnidirectional treadmill. First, we have a row of rods that support forward and backward motion. Think of how luggage can move forward and backward on a conveyor belt made up of many spinning rods. Nothing special there. Now apply the construction destruction concept to see how we can additionally support sideways motion. A material and shape that can easily construct itself on one end, flow to the other end, and destroy itself is a string. You can have a string that wraps around the pipe in a spiral. The entire set of spirals can be pushed left or right using something like this, a belt with thin vertical protrusions on the outside. The belt can push the rope sideways while the rod and the rope itself are spinning. If we're pushing the rod to the left, the left side will be unraveling the spiral, or destroying it in other words. The rope then gets fed through the middle of the pipe and out the other end, where it is wound into a spiral again or constructed again. This is just a concept I've thought of at this point, but I want to try it out at some point in the future. Next on the list is a support rig for VR. This rig is collapsible, which is a huge plus for me because normally VR treadmills are large, heavy, and not very portable. It's nice to see someone designing a more compact rig with portability in mind. For this rig, you run in place, sort of like with the Cat Loco, while the rig keeps you from falling over, 
or you can slide on a low friction surface like with other slide mills. And finally, we're at the last item on the list, which is a VR support rig that I will be designing for my shoes. Regardless of the solution, when the user is playing VR, he is essentially blindfolded. If the user is on a VR treadmill, he is on a slippery or movable surface, blind. If he's wearing VR shoes, he's essentially trying to walk on roller skates, blindfolded. Even if the chances of the user falling are small or the user is experienced with the device, there is still a good chance that during the many hours of play, the user is going to end up falling and could seriously hurt himself. We need a VR support rig that can make sure the user does not fall. The simplest solution that I have come up with is to strap into a safety harness and strap the harness to a swivel in the ceiling. But many users might not want or can't hook into their ceiling. A simple VR rig that I am going to make will look something like this portable pull-up bar. You can see that the portable pull-up bar can expand when it is in use and then be folded up flat for easy storage. My VR support rig will look very similar to this, but it will additionally have a platform at the bottom. My VR shoes benefit greatly from having a level, smooth surface with good traction, and a platform will ensure that that's always the case. The platform will allow users who only have carpets in their home to use the VR shoes too. When not in use, the platform can just fold up flat with the rest of the VR rig for easy storage. And that's it for this video, everyone. YouTube doesn't know if this video is good unless you interact with it. So leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.